Hey boys and girls, this is Tom. I hope everybody's having a great week and I have an incredible video for you today. I don't want you to click nothing. Don't smash nothing. Don't buy nothing. Don't subscribe to nothing. Just give me your attention because I have some incredible news for you today. First of all, more shish kebabs being made out of Tesla by mainstream media while legacy automakers are getting pretty much ignored even though their cars are catching fire. So it's incredible. I have to show you these two articles, one about GM, one about Tesla, and it's incredible how different they are. Coincidence? I don't know. Also, more trouble for Boeing. The 737s are in deep shit again. More potential failures that may lead to pilots being incapacitated. 11,000 aircraft are being now examined. Again, Boeing and failures with the 737, it ain't over yet. Also, Kathy Wood is talking about Chinese stock and Bitcoin, basically coming closer to my position that Chinese stock are just not worth the risk. The skin isn't worth the game. And I'm going to show you all about it in a second. Also, Jackson Palmer, the guy who invented Dogecoin and famously made no money off it, is now criticizing the community and basically saying that he's checking out, talking some real smack about what's going on with the cryptocurrency community. You have to hear what he has to say. A fully packed show today. A lot of stuff to talk about. Let's get straight into it. My name is Tom Nash and I quit my corporate job as a senior financial analyst to break down companies for you. If there's one thing you need to know about me, I don't take bullshit from anybody. So thank you for staying with me and everything I say here is just my opinion, which means it might be inaccurate, it might be wrong, it might be completely the ramblings of a madman. You have to do your own research before you make any sort of decisions because I am not a financial advisor. So first of all, let's talk about the Boeing 737. So according to this article, which I want to show you right now, the FAA is asking Boeing to perform inspections on the 737 switch. Basically, look at this. FAA orders inspections of Boeing 737 jets for possible switch failures. Now, when you hear switch failures, it doesn't have to do with the TV screens or the toilets. Look at this. More than 9,000 Boeing aircraft worldwide and 2,500 in the US must be inspected for a potential flaw in a pressure switch that could lead to pilots becoming incapacitated. Are you kidding me? Again, I don't know what the people at the FAA are doing, but you have a potential failure that may lead to pilots being incapacitated and you performing tests instead of grounding all these motherfuckers and testing them one by one. Are you freaking kidding me? And I'm not even talking about Boeing, where the word failure is now synonymous with the company. I mean, this is not even surprising anymore, but the FAA, come on, do your job. I mean, if you're even thinking about investing in Boeing at this point, after my last video, this is just another proof of what I said, and it came way faster than even I thought. Now let's move on. Jackson Palmer, the guy who invented Dogecoin, has some tough words for the Dogecoin community and the cryptocurrency community. And you have to hear what he has to say because these are some really tough accusations. Dogecoin co-founder Jackson Palmer resurfaces on Twitter to empathetically state that he would not return to cryptocurrency. He contends that despite claims of decentralization, the cryptocurrency industry is controlled by a powerful cartel of wealthy figures. Part of his rationale, cryptocurrency is like taking the worst parts of today's capitalist system, e.g. corruption, fraud, and inequality, and using software to technically limit the use of interventions, e.g. audits, regulation, taxation, which serve as protections or safety nets for the average person. Now, again, you have to take what Jackson says with a grain of salt because you have to understand that this dude is salty. Now, he actually invented one of the most famous coins ever, Dogecoin, with everything that just went on. It's been going crazy. People made billions on this coin, but not him. He hasn't made a single cent because he made this coin as a joke. So there's a level of saltiness and bitterness there for sure. And having said that, I do want to point out that, first of all, I like Jackson. I think he's a funny dude. I connected with him on Twitter a few times. Also, I think what he's saying here is not completely bullshit. There's definitely a lot of issues with concentration of power within this community. A lot of people are hoarding a lot of this Bitcoin and a lot of issues need to be addressed. So it's not completely without merit. He's definitely making valid accusations that need to be addressed. But however, however, with me liking Jackson and everything, there's still a level of salt in this there. I mean, he missed the train a little bit. So there's definitely something here to be said about that. So I would just take this with a little bit of grain of salt, but definitely real accusations that need to be addressed. And now let's talk about Kathy Wood. I mean, this is insane. Kathy Wood, Bitcoin, China stocks deserve valuation downgrade, but the opportunities remain in those sectors. Kathy Wood went from the camp of basically like the Charlie Mungers. Well, China is amazing. Look at this growth to, hey, it's only okay if the valuation is low enough. Only at a discount 
it's worth buying. Now, I've talked about this scam, basically saying, well, Chinese stock carry more risk. So at a proper discount, it might make sense to invest. I don't agree, but she's definitely getting closer to my position, which is Chinese stocks are dangerous. Now, I don't agree with what she's saying about Bitcoin. I don't think that China leaving the Bitcoin game basically deserves a downgrade of Bitcoin. There's definitely other opportunities all over the world. But as far as Chinese stock, I agree with her and some. I'm even more extreme. I'm stipulating that there's no amount of discount that justifies, I mean, unless they give it away for free, the risks. The discount of 30% doesn't reflect the risk of what the Chinese government is doing properly, and that's why I'm staying away. Now, I want you to take a this Reuters article. US urges 50,000 Chevy Bolt owners to park outside because of fire risks. Now, look at this. On CNBC, GM warns some Bolt EV owners don't park them inside or charge them unattended overnight. Basically, you can see the difference in the headlines. Obviously, they mean completely different things, even though the fact remains that GM, Chevy Bolt, are spontaneously catching fire to the level where the company itself has no choice but to tell them, hey guys, don't park this inside because it may catch fire. You want to talk to me about Tesla? Now, speaking of Tesla, look at what they did to Elon. Look at this headline. Elon Musk admits Tesla Cybertruck could flop. Honestly, look at the tweet himself. Look at what he actually said. This is insane. Just the CEO Elon Musk said Thursday in an exchange with fans on Twitter that there's always some chance his company's forthcoming Cybertruck will flop. So there's always some chance that this car will flop, which is true for every single car coming out, out of every single company to this headline. Elon Musk admits Tesla's Cybertruck could flop. Completely different headline versus what the man said. And this is even more glaring when you compare it to what they did with the GM and the Chevy Bolt and all this nonsense. Obviously, this is a total bullshit piece. And I completely don't understand people who still use mainstream media for their information. At this point, it's time to move on. Now, I hope you enjoyed this little quick take from me. I just want to give you the main pieces of the news within seven to eight minutes max. And just to get you moving along, don't want to waste your time. Want to keep it quick. As always, a huge shout out to the channel members and the Patreons. You guys are amazing. I love you. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys in the next video.